Hi Richard here from Let's Ride Motorcycle Training. Thanks for joining me today on probably the first dry day we've had here in the UK for about six months. It's been absolutely nuts. So anyway, I thought I'd take the opportunity to uh, uh, brush off the old cobwebs and uh, hit the roads and do one of the, let's face it, one of the most funnest things we can do when riding bikes, which is country roads. It is awesome fun. Now, the flip side to that, the rather dark flip side to that, it is one of the biggest hotspots for motorcycle accidents. So why is that? So what I thought I'd do is take you around a little twisty road near where I live and just explain the sort of things that I'm looking out for and doing to keep myself safe. Now, in the words of the great Casey Stoner, the legend MotoGP champion, the usual cause of accidents is people's ambition outweighing their talent. Uh, and let's face it, speed is a big factor to that, or rather inappropriate speeds for the conditions that you're traveling at. You know, if you go barreling into a blind corner at a crazy speed and then suddenly confronted by a tractor in the middle of the road, you know, you're gonna panic, smack the front brake on and all sorts of nastiness is gonna occur. So we've got to just anticipate the dangers on a country road and that could be um, you know, tr farm traffic, it could be oncoming traffic on the wrong side of the road, you know, it could be uh, debris on the road, grit, gravel, mud, all things which we don't like as motorcyclists. So we've got to try and identify these zones, uh, zones of danger well in advance, keeping our head up, looking all the way down the road. Um, not just, uh, just up ahead, but looking the road surface as well. Uh, as I say, uh, particularly around farms, uh, mud, all that kind of stuff can build up and it can be very, very unpleasant. Um, so we've got to ride at a speed that we can uh, just absorb all this information around us. Now, you know, the speed limits are not targets, it's just the maximum for the area that we're traveling in and plenty of things can slow us down. So I'm going to head to a, a nice twisty country I know about and we'll go from there. Okay, as so we're just about to enter the little twisty road, uh, let me just introduce you to the bike I'm riding today. It is the rather lovely 2024 Suzuki GSX-S 1000 GT. So I finally got round to replacing my BMW and I've got to say I, I love this bike. It is absolutely epic. Uh, I've added some bar risers on it just to make it a little bit more comfortable for town riding and uh, the seat was a bit of a plank so I've stuck a nice soft seat cover on it as well just to make that a bit more comfortable for days in the saddle but it is a bit of a bit of kit this thing okay so we're going to be taking a right turn here and with any luck we won't get any cars in front of us yes there is i'll try and get pissed past this car pretty quickly so straight away we've got some gravel there so i'm just trying to pinpoint these areas danger pretty quickly so as I was turning into the road there I was just looking at the road surface a lot of gravel so nice and careful try and keep the bike as upright as I possibly could okay now the car is going at pretty good speed I'm just gonna get past him Okay, so we're coming up to the right hand. I'm just going to bring the bike to the left a little bit. Just give me a slightly better view around the corner. Just going to drop the speed. Now, I'm not ignoring the hazard triangles here. We've got a sharp left-hander and we've got a warning of potential horse riders. Now, straight away, I can see there's some debris in the road. Which side do we pick? I'm going to pick the left side of the debris only because I don't want to get too close to oncoming traffic. Yeah, people cut the corner. Now, I know it's better to stay out to the right and get a better view around the corner. But honestly, I've seen so many people cutting corners coming the other way that uh, I don't favour that on blind corners. Okay, so slowing it down a little bit, a bit more debris on the left, getting my speed right down, a bit more debris in the middle of the lane, keeping the bike speed down. When you've got a lot of loose material, you want to keep the bike as upright as you can, really. This, that means that reducing your speed right down. Remember, the, the, more, the faster you go, the more you have to lean over. So therefore, the slower you go, the less you've got to lean over. That makes life a bit safer on these roads with a lot of gravel. So I'll just bring the bike out a little bit to the right there. Now I am using counter steering here. I will do a video on that. So I keep my eyes up, looking all the way around the corner. But I'm just trying to anticipate bad things ahead. So maybe a car pulling out, maybe a tractor coming the other way, people walking across the road. 
So remember, that even though the speed limit back there was national, there's no way I was going to do the national speed limit. It just wasn't safe to. The only time I did there was just overtaking the car. Okay, so we're in a 40, so we're just uh, cruising along at 40. Now it's perfectly safe to do 40. I've got really good visibility up the road here. No problems at all. I'm keeping the bike in the centre of the lane at the moment, but I will vary that. You know, if I'm moving out or moving in, it's going to help me see better or people see me better. I will do that. But at the moment, I'm just going to stay in the middle of the lane. Now what we can also do, with no oncoming traffic, which there is, we can get the bike more central in the middle of the road completely. That gives you the best clearance from the left and the right. But here I'm just going to keep it in the middle of the lane. Now just going over the common now. Now places like this we do look for wildlife. Um, for example they get a lot of cows would you believe. Uh, the farmers let the cows out down here sometimes. Uh, they're usually pretty good. They stay off the roads but not always. So if we're going over a blind hill we need to anticipate things like that, as crazy as it sounds, could go over a hill and it's a herd of cows in the middle of the road, yeah? That's the sort of thing we need to be thinking. Right, so up ahead then we've got a cyclist, we need to give them plenty of room. So, all good behind me, just go nice and wide here, nice and wide. And then back in, and we'll take the next left. Now one thing you'll notice when I'm riding around these really technical roads, is I'm not doing a lot of mirror checking. I'm keeping my eyes in front of me for a lot of the time where the danger is. But when it's safe to, uh, now for example, it's pretty safe. I can do the mirror checks, no problem. And back up to 40. So again, just paying attention to the hazard triangles. So we've got uh, more warnings of horse riders. And that's really important to know with these twisty roads and blind corners, remember horses trot very slowly so you don't want to go barreling into a blind corner to be kind of fry up by a, confronted by a horse or two. Be very dangerous for both you and the horse rider. So again, it's all about appropriate speeds. So 40 is absolutely fine around here. Now again, look, debris in the middle of the lane there, lots of it, so I'm just keeping to the left. We've got a cattle crossing grid, it can be really slippery in the wet. Okay today, but keep the bike as upright as you can. Nice and steady around this blind corner, all the way down to sort of 25, 26 there. Okay, I can use a bit more of the road now, just give myself a better view down the road. So I'm keeping the bike to the right a little bit now. And up ahead I can see a national speed limit sign. Am I going to do 60 down here? No, not a chance. Absolutely no way. I could probably go a little bit faster than 40, but not a lot faster. I will bring the bike to the right a little bit, not too close to the centre, though. Again, it's a reasonably tight corner. People do cut the corner. Bringing the bike to the left, bit of debris in the lane, slowing it right down now, right down now, until I can see better coming out of the corner. Now I can pick up the pace of it. Bringing the bike out to the right a little bit. Pedestrian in the road, that's the sort of thing that we're looking for, yeah? We're anticipating people being in the road. This is why we don't want to carry excess speed. Now imagine if I'd hammered it around that corner at 50, 60 miles per hour. Crazy. And people do, it's nuts. So we've got a warning of a Ford. No, not the car. Yeah, this road floods quite a lot. And we can probably go up a bit of speed now. I've got a bit better view. Still not doing 60 though, I'm doing 50. Bit of a lot of water on the road. Bit of a lot of water, that's good English. Some water across the road is a better way of putting it. Now I'm back down to 30. Slowing it down. So why are we in a 30? Well, built up area, isn't it? So there's pedestrians all over the place. Probably not on a little hamlet like this, but you know, you never know. Right, let's just bring it down, coming up to the junction. So, right, we've got traffic coming the other way. Nobody's indicating, I'm not trusting that though. So I'm watching like a hawk, he's turning left. So straight away, I'm just pinpointing, there's a uh, guy just mowing the garden, his garden there. So let's just keep the speed down. So I'm in a 30, I'm gonna keep it to about 25 though. Now look down there, we've got a car, the nose of a car just sticking out of the driveway. Are they coming out? Are they just parked up? We don't know. So let's bring the bike out to the right a little bit. And in fact, there's nobody in it, that's fine. Keeping the bike out to the right a bit, gives me a better view. Okay, here comes a national. So I can pick up the pace again. Can I'm not gonna go 60, that's crazy. So I can bring the bike out to the right a little bit. Yeah, looks good. There is some vehicles coming, so now I'll just bring the bike back to the left. Don't want to be anywhere near them, really. Now I can move back across to the right. Gives me a slightly better view. I can see that the road isn't a particularly sharp corner. 
Now I'm going to come across to the left a little bit, maybe slow it down a little bit. So the road is getting a bit wet up here. Slowing it down, keeping it to the left. Okay, right, now I can pick up the pace. Got a good view up the road there. Now, nothing coming, so I can take a more direct route through this S-Bend. No problem at all, but just watching out for cars coming out of driveways. There's a junction here, watching out for cars coming out of there. Very patriotic flag on the left. Let's slow things down a bit more. Bit of a blind corner, slowing it down. So I'm down to like 45, 46 miles an hour now. So yeah, even though national speed limit is 60, I'm not going to do that. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, let's bring the speed down and bring the speed down. Make sure we're doing 30 before the 30 side. Right, look up ahead then. We've got a lot of parked cars on the right, so that will push oncoming traffic into our lane. So let's just watch out for that. There's a little bit of debris on the road here, a bit of a fallen tree branch there. Okay, we're going to turn right at the end. Okay, so he's turning right, so we'll go nose to nose here. Okay, so 30, here comes your 40 sign. Okay, uh, do I, can I do 40 down here? Probably. Again, a bit of a blind corner, again, just paying attention to those hazard triangles. More sharp corners and a junction on the left. And more horses, possibly. Now, look at the potholes in the road here, awful. Slowing it down, a lot of debris, a lot of loose material. Where there's potholes, there's loose material. And the road's broken up. It is getting pretty awful around here for potholes. Right, let's pick up the pace. I think we can safely do 40 now. And we've got nothing coming the other way, so I'm actually going to stay in the middle of the road. And now I can see there's a car coming, so just biasing it to the left again now. Again, just watching out for junctions on the left and right. Junctions are a massive danger zone for us, particularly on country roads. And again, more triangles telling us uh, we've got a junction coming up. So I'm going to bring the bike out to the right a little bit. That will allow any cars coming up to that junction to see me earlier. And let's just slow it down for the 30. Okay, so blind corner. So I just keep my eyes peeled. So that van was just on my side of the road a little bit there, which is why I don't want to go out to the right too much on these blind corners. Okay, right turn at the end. So we've got a staggered junction here. Uh, also be careful of cars cutting the corner turning into this road. So take your time. And off we go. Bit of attention on that car on the left. Now we're back into a 40 zone coming up. So again, can we do 40? Yeah, I reckon we can. We've got a good view up the road there. If I can bring the bike to the left a little bit, that will just help me see around the corner a bit better. I don't want to go too far to the left. Uh, you won't be able to make it out on the camera, but you know, a lot of debris building up on the on the gutter there. Okay, so we've got a car just pulling out from the left there. Oncoming traffic now. So okay, just bring the bike to the left. A lot of potholes on the left. Don't want to be anywhere near that lorry. Their mirrors are always head height. So let's keep to the left a bit there. And off we go. And again, we've got another national coming up. Can we do 60 down here? Okay, let's, uh, we can probably wind it up a little bit. So 50, 50, yeah, I'm okay with 50. Bring the bike to the left. Anticipating things happening, what can happen around the corner. Car pulling out, that kind of thing. Let's take the next left. I don't want to go too quick into this corner. Imagine there's a parked car here. Right, now as you can see now, the road opens up beautifully. So we can increase the speed a bit. Now it's very bumpy, very bumpy road. So what I'm doing with the handlebars is keeping my arms really relaxed, as relaxed as I possibly can, so I can flap my arms around like a floppy doll here. Keeping a loose grip on the handlebars, barely holding on to be fair, just enough to put a bit of energy into the steering and into the levers and throttle. Uh, I'm not doing 60 though, not comfortable doing 60 down here. I'm down to sort of 52, 53 right now. Slowing it down. Okay, so we've got some cyclists. That means car's going to be overtaken. Let's slow it right down in case that car comes past. I also brought the bike to the left. I'll give a little wave to the car driver there because he behaved himself and that car is also behaving. So just bringing the bikes to the left, giving a little wave to the car and to thank him for not overtaking there. 
Positive reinforcement, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we want to encourage good behavior. Okay, so we have, uh, has a triangle, we've got an S-bend left to right. So I can bring the bike to the right a little bit. Bit of debris in the road, a lot of debris in the road. Now I kept the bike out to the right there because I could see around the corner pretty well there. Bringing the speed right down, right down. So you've got uh, loose material, you've got uh, standing water, you've got a pedestrian on the left unloading a car. Uh, you can see a bit more wet roads there, which will reduce grip levels. Not that the speed we're doing is going to be a big issue, to be fair. We're not really pushing the tyres that much for the wet surface to be a problem, but loose material can, absolutely. Okay, so just bring the bike to the left a little bit. Still not comfortable doing much more than 45. Might be able to increase the speed a little bit here, not too much. And we're heading back into a 30 zone. Right, a lot of parked cars on the right, so eyes peeled. Looking all the way down the roads. Closing it down, closing it down, speeding down. Speeding down doesn't make sense either. <laughs> Slowing it down, that's, that's what I meant to say. Right, okay, eyes up, looking all the way down the road. Clearly cool school kicking out time. So, okay, slow it right down, right down, right down. I can see there's some feet underneath the lorry. There's a person at the back. There's still things like that. So I was actually looking under the lorry there and I could see the feet of the worker at the back there. So I knew there was a, a person around. He can do that, he can look underneath there because you can look um, through the windows of cars, that kind of thing. Just trying to get an idea of what's happening. Okay, so we've got the pedestrians with the push chair and a guy mowing his lawn. So I'm just going to bring the bike out nice and wide, nice and wide, nice and slow as well. Nice and slow, nice and slow. And off we go. Okay, nice and safe to do 30 down here. I love these little Honda E's. Very cool. Right, now we've got a blind summit here. Can't see a thing over the hill, so I'm still okay doing 30. Again, I'm just looking all the way down the road here and scanning the size of the roads as well. Just trying to pick up any potential danger zones. Okay, very bumpy roads, so I'm just keeping my arms very, very relaxed here. Suzuki suspension doing a good job. the bike fraction to the right bit of debris in the road there and look we've got another national coming up again can we do 60 i seriously doubt it okay i'll go a little bit quicker i'll get up to 40. okay junction a lot of attention on the junction keeping the bike out in the middle of the road at the moment okay no way you could do 60 down here bumpy bumpy road also just lifting myself out of the seat a little bit if I see a big bump coming. Get my legs to do a bit of suspension as well. Look how slow we're around that corner. Okay, we're in a 30 now, but I was doing about 25 there. Getting the speed right down, move the bike over to the left there. More hazard triangles, because we've got a junction on the right, and we've got one on the left as well. Now that's interesting, because the signpost only warned me of the one on the right, but there is one on the left as well. Okay, so yeah, I think we're okay to do 30. Here comes another national. Got a blind corner coming up. So I'm just gonna keep it to 40, maybe less than 40. In fact, I am gonna go less than 40. I can't see a thing. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Okay, good, we're okay. We can speed up a little bit. So we've got uh, a lot of standing water on the right, crossing the road at the bottom here. Not gonna be an issue for us. Big pothole in the road though. I'm only doing 32 miles an hour there in a national. Okay, I'm just about to come into a 30. I've got a good view around the corner. And around we go. But if we look up the road, you can see how sharp it swings around to the right. And this is what catches people out if they're not familiar with the road. They go into a corner way too quick and suddenly discover it's a, like a hairpin and end up going straight into a hedge. As I did when I was 17. <laughs> I speak from bitter experience. Okay, look how slow I'm going here. It's just, I don't want to go any faster than that around that. There's a rat running across the road, lovely. Okay, let's take a left at the end. 
Okay, so that's the really twisty technical part of the road. Now this is going to speed up a little bit now. And uh, remember one of the biggest danger zones is corners. And that is just too fast for the lean angle. That's all about the lean angle. Uh, and certainly as a new rider, uh, new riders are quite nervous, and, you know, rightly so, of leaning a bike over. And that's the problem. They go too fast, they don't lean over enough and don't go around the corner. So what do we do if we go wide in a corner? We just lean over more. So we've got a good view now. So I'm going to get up to 60, no problem. And no real need to stay in any other position other than the middle of the lane here. Okay, so we've got a junction top left and a junction on the right as well. Oncoming traffic, a little bit of debris in the road. Keep it in the middle of the lane. I don't want to go too close to the oncoming traffic just in case they cut in the corner. So what I'll do in a minute, I'll go around a right hand corner too fast for the lean angle that I've got, which is going to start pushing me out wide. What do I do? Well, I don't break. I mean, that is, unfortunately that's the instinct, isn't it? You know, your brain goes, oh my God, and you want to just slam the brakes on. And oh, actually the worst thing to do. Um, Cornering theory is a fascinating subject and I can recommend, it's quite an old book now, uh, it's called Twist of the Wrist by Keith Code, a fabulous book on the physics of cornering on a motorcycle. Um, it's worth a look, I think there's a volume two as well. Very old book, it might be difficult to find now, but really, really good book. Um, but if you read a book like that or just do any kind of research into riding a motorcycle around corners, you know, one of the worst things you can do is slam on that front brake in the corner. Unfortunately, that's the instinct, isn't it? It's panic, shut the throttle off, hit the front brake. Now, I'm going deliberately slow because I just want to uh, get a bit of gap between me and the uh, cars in front there. Uh, so what should we do? Well, we don't want to be smacking on the front brake, do we? Well, firstly, you know, we should be going too fast. You know, that's the root course. You've gone too fast for the lean angle that you've got. So until your confidence grows in the corners, just keep that speed down. Just remember, you're better off going too slow than too fast, aren't you? If you go too slow, it doesn't matter, does it? You can just speed up. But if you go too fast, that's where bad things happen. But what do we do if we start going wide in a corner? Well, we just got to grit our teeth and lean over more. So I will demonstrate that in just a moment. So we've got a nice visibility here, but deceptive this road because there is a hidden dip and this is another problem area for cars and bikes is overtaking in places they shouldn't if you can't see this is what we have you see the um, the center lines here we've got long white lines that's telling you it's dangerous to overtake here it doesn't say you can't but you need to be very cautious of overtaking it the longer the line the more hazardous the road so this is a nice gentle right hand corner uh, I don't want to go too close to the centre of the road because don't forget, as I'm leaning over, you know, my head could go to the other side of the road, couldn't it? Okay, I think we've got a decent gap coming up. I'll just keep the speed down a little bit longer. Okay. Right, here we go. So, I'm going to get the speed up. So I'm going to go a little bit too fast for the lean angle that I've got. It's going to push the bike out to the left, which would be catastrophic if I don't do anything about it. All I'm going to do is put some more pressure on the right handlebar and lean over more. Okay, so I'm coming into the corner a little bit too hot for the lean angle. I'm going wide, going wide, going wide. Push the right handlebar, bike leans over more. I didn't shut off the throttle. And the bike went around beautifully. No issues at all. You know, we're not pushing these bikes really. Not, I mean, this masterpiece of a motorcycle I'm sitting on now, you know, this bike is way better than I, I am. <laughs> okay, so, you know, just get that thing over, you'll be absolutely fine. But as I say, we can avoid that scenario completely just by slowing down. It's a bit of a mantra in my training, you know, slow down, slow, go too slow and too fast. Doesn't matter if you go too slow, speed up. Okay, so let's take a right turn here. Now, this is a lovely twisty road. There is a bit of uh, traffic though. A little bit of a shame. I was kind of hoping I'd have a clear road here. Um, I'll be able to get past them. If I could do a safe overtake, I will. So look at all this mud on the road here. 
Look at that. Imagine come, being a rider coming over that hill now, middle of the lane, straight on top of that mud. Okay, now I do have, uh, might have an opportunity here. Let's go over to the left, gives us a slightly better view. He's going quite slow. Hold you back a little bit. Don't want to intimidate you. We don't want to go too close to the vehicles in front. Because it's dangerous, isn't it? Go too close to a vehicle in front. If they brake hard, where are you going to go? Straight into the back of them. Not to mention we can see better if we're not so close. Right, doesn't look like I'm going to have much success getting past this car. I do have an opportunity coming up here. So this will be a quick overtake if it happens. Yes, okay, so let's get going. So we've got a lovely left-hand corner coming up here. So we get the speed down before the corner. We bring it out to the right a little bit. I just put some forward pressure on the left hand bar, tipping the bike in, bit of power on the back wheel, drive it out of the corner, and off we go. Ah, I think we can get up to 60 down here, no problem. Now already I can see there's a lot of standing water down here. I don't think it's gonna be a big issue at the moment. Just bring the bike to the left, slowing it down a little bit now. Can't see around the next corner, slowing it down. It's warning me of a slippery surface and an S bed. Looking at the road surface, then actually doesn't look too bad. Bit of standing water up here. Okay, a lot of debris in the road here, so I'm just going to bring it out just a little bit to the right. Now, it's not going to put me too close to the center of the road there, but if you can see, you've got a big um, stretch of wet road and mud, so I brought the bike to the right that time. Okay, bring the bike to the right then. Okay, making sure he's definitely turning right, he is. And off we go. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed that. That was one of my favourite little country roads. Um, obviously I know that road very well, which does help. The key is on a road you don't know, just slow down. Slow, 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 slow. And even if it's a road you do know, if you can't see around the corner, you just don't know what's coming. So just slow it down. You need to be able to stop really quickly in the distance you can see. So you need to be riding at a speed that you can do that, okay? Because you don't, don't want to be barreling around a corner and come head on with a combine harvester. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel, feel free to pop them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.